Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Shannon and today I'm going to be telling you guys all about the books that I read in February. I know that this video is very long overdue, I'm aware that it's going up quite late in the month so I am sorry about that, but if you keep up with my videos you'll know that I don't post wrap ups anymore. I kind of fell out of love of posting wrap ups a few months ago and I just haven't been bothered to do so ever since, but for some reason this month I decided that I wanted to film a wrap up, I wanted to tell you guys about all the books I read and so I'm finally sitting down to do so. Before we dive into the video please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, it really does help me out and if you click the little bell icon next to the subscribe icon then you'll also be notified every time that I post and that way you won't miss any future videos from me. I do actually have eight books today that I'm going to talk to you guys about so without further ado let's just dive into the video. So in the first week of February Polathon was happening and if you don't know what that is it's a readathon hosted by Jade over at JD Ray Reads where you basically read polar fantasy throughout that entire week so that is any book that's based in a snowy setting and has fantastical elements in it. Now if you saw my February TBR you'll know that I had a very ambitious stack of books to get through and that didn't end up happening. I got so busy with being on placement and things like that that I just couldn't prioritise reading and so out of the five or six books I think that I had on my TBR I only managed to read two. The first book I read was Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I was actually buddy reading this with Chloe from Chloe Reads Books. I'd seen that she'd mentioned this book on her Polathon TBR and because I had it online anyway I thought it only made sense to buddy read it so that was definitely a fun way to get through this book. In this one our main character Kamzin has always dreamed of being the Emperor's next royal explorer. She knows that she could be the best of the best if only someone would give her a chance. One day the royal explorer of River Shara turns up at Kamzin's village and everyone thinks that he's going to choose Kamzin's older sister Lucia to go on this expedition with him but he shocks everyone and he chooses to take Kamzin instead and this then sets off a lot of different things in motion where Lucia actually goes on this expedition with the rival explorer to try and get there before Kamzin and River and it's all about Kamzin trying to tackle Raksha which is the biggest and deadliest mountain in the Arias which are the mountain ranges in this world whilst also trying to look for a sister because like I said this is the deadliest mountain in this place. She knows her sister's there with a different explorer and so she's torn between trying to find her sister and making sure that she's safe and also helping River in his mission to serve the Emperor. So reading the blurb for this one I went into it thinking it was a survival story so you know we're on this expedition in a snowy setting it's very high stakes but once I started getting into it I realised that there were a lot of different elements. It wasn't solely about this expedition. It does also have a lot of fantastical elements in it. There are dragons in there which is really cool and I didn't expect that. There are familiars in here as well and that is when people have bonds with animals. So we did have a lot of magical aspects in this that I really did enjoy and I was absolutely loving this book up until the 200 page mark. I feel like after that point it just went downhill for me and that was mainly because there was a romance introduced which was kind of unnecessary. I didn't really pay much attention to it. It was kind of insta lovey in a way and I just really didn't gel with that. And then because we're on this survival story I thought it was going to be extremely high stakes but for everything that happened in this book that would have made it very dangerous. The characters just had a very convenient way of getting out of it and that ultimately really irritated me because obviously if you want the story to be believable there has to be some sort of danger in it and there has to be some sort of element of suspense where you genuinely feel like something could happen but I just never had that with this book. I always knew that stuff was going to work out and then the plot twist at the end as well didn't really do anything for me. I wasn't shocked, I wasn't bothered. I think by that point I just lost interest in this book which is really sad because like I said I went into this really invested, I was loving it but unfortunately a lot of different elements came together where I just really didn't gel with that. So I did end up giving this book three stars, still a good rating, like I said I really did enjoy it. I think the first half of this would definitely be a four or a 4.5 stars and then the second half is a two star and so to even out my rating I went for a number in the middle and that's how I came up with the three stars. I'm not sure if I'll continue on with the second book, I kind of want to see where it goes but because the ending of this was quite disappointing I'm not sure if I want to spend money on getting the second one and then ending up not liking it anyway. And then the second book that I read for Polathon was Stealing Snow by Danielle Page. This is actually a retelling of The Snow Queen which is very interesting to me. I haven't read the original tale of The Snow Queen before and I thought this would be a really fun way to dive into the story. Unfortunately though I really did not like this one at all. For this one I will just read you guys the synopsis because I feel like if I try and tell you what this book is about I will probably end up spoiling you for something. So it just says here, first kisses sometimes wake slumbering princesses, undo spells and spark happily ever afters. Mind broke bail. 17 year old 
old Snow has spent her life locked in Whittaker Psychiatric, but she isn't crazy. And that's not the worst of it. Her very first kiss proves anything but innocent when Bale, her only love, turns violent. Despite Snow knowing that Bale would never truly hurt her, he is taken away, dashing her last hope for any sort of future in the mental ward she calls home. With nowhere else to turn, Snow finds herself drawn to a strange new orderly who whispers secrets in the night about a mysterious past and a kingdom that's hers for the taking. If only she can find her way past the iron gates to the tree that has been haunting her dreams. Beyond the tree lies Algird, a land far away from the real world frozen by a ruthless king. And there too await the river witch, a village boy named Kai, the charming thief Jagger, and a prophecy that Snow will save them all. This edgy reimagining of the Snow Queen by New York Times bestselling author Daniel Page begins the epic story of Snow's rise to villain, queen, and ultimate once upon a time heroine. So just from the synopsis, this book sounded like it would be right up my street. I do love a good retelling, and so I did go into this one with very high expectations. Like I said, that definitely wasn't the case. For some reason, I was finding it very hard to get into the book to start off with, and then the further on I got into the book, the more elements I found that I just did not care for at all. As was the case for even The Darkest Stars, there were a lot of things that happened in this book that were very convenient, and it really did irk me. Our main character, Snow, makes her way over to this land and finds out that she has some magical powers. She cannot master these powers at all. She can barely create the simplest spells with her magic, but one day when she's out in the town, she sees this bad guy doing something, and the first thought in her head is, I want to tackle this guy head on with my magic, and she does so. Even though two pages ago she couldn't do any magic and had no idea how to use it. That just didn't make sense to me, it made me so so angry, and again, just made me not believe in the character and this world. Another thing is that we wouldn't see characters travel from one place to the next. So in one chapter, a big sort of scene would happen where you'd want to see the repercussions of that, but we don't. As soon as the action stops, we cut to a different scene and the character has then moved on to there, and we don't hear about the fates of the other characters and things like that. So it was very jarring, definitely took me out of the story. And then another element, I thought there was a love triangle in this book. There is a love square. So I don't think this is a spoiler because it does say so in the synopsis, but in the psychiatric ward, Snow has a boyfriend called Bale and something happens to Bale that makes Snow go into this world and all she can think about throughout the first couple of chapters is how she needs to make sure Bale's okay, she needs to get back to him, this sort of thing. But then in the next chapter she kisses another boy and then she says, ooh, I think I'm in love with him but I still like Bale. And then we go on through the story and a couple of chapters after that she meets another boy and she falls in love with him! And I just can't keep up, it's never addressed. Random things happen throughout this book where I'm just very very confused. This whole love thing did not need to be in there at all, it didn't add anything to the story, it was very insta livy and I just could not deal with it, and for that reason I gave this book two stars. I will say though, if I would have read this a couple of years ago, I probably would have really enjoyed it. I think it's just the fact now that I've progressed as a reader, and so this sort of thing just doesn't cut it for me anymore. If this sounds like your type of thing, then I would definitely recommend you pick it up. The beauty of being readers is that we all like different things, and we all appreciate different stories, and so if this sounds like your type of thing, then go for it. I really do hope you enjoy it. But unfortunately, this just was not the book for me, and I probably will be unhauling it very, very soon. After reading those two books, I did find myself falling into a reading slump. As you saw, I didn't really enjoy either of them, and so I needed a book to get me out of this weird negative headspace. So what better book for that than Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas? This is one of my all-time favourite series. I absolutely love it. I know it's cheesy and cringy in parts, but sometimes you just need some of that in your life. I first read the Throne of Glass series about four or five years ago now, I want to say. It was definitely around the time that I started watching booktube, but at that point it was only the first four books that were out, so up to Queen of Shadows I believe, and then Empire of Storms came out the year after I read this, and so I read that book, absolutely loved it, but I just never carried on with the last two books in the series, and so I don't actually know how the series ends. This year I've decided will finally be the year that I finish out this series. There is a read-along going along for these books at the minute as well, which is very very handy. It's called Tog Along, I will leave all the information that you need down below, but basically we read one book in the Throne of Glass series every month, and then the hosts have a live show discussion about it at the end of the month. I forgot just how much I love this book. Like I said, it's very cheesy and cringy, but I just absolutely love everything about it. I love that it's a fantasy book, we have an assassin as the main character who's also female, we have the cocky prince, we have the prince's guard, and it is just everything I didn't know I needed in a book until I found this one. I was just going to tell you guys the synopsis of this book off the top of my head, but honestly, reading the blurb, it just sounds so much better than anything else I could articulate, so I am just going to read it to you, I'm sorry if you don't like that, but it just says here, when magic has gone from the world and a vicious king rules from his throne of glass, an assassin comes to the castle. She does not come to kill, but to win her freedom. If she can defeat 23 killers, thieves and warriors in a competition to find the greatest assassin in the land, she will become the king's champion and be released from prison. Her name is 
Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a foreign land will become the one thing Selena never thought she'd have again. But something evil dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying horribly, one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival, and a desperate quest to root out the source of the evil before it destroys her world. That is just such an amazing summary of this book. I feel like if you haven't heard about this book before, you definitely want to pick it up now. As you can probably see, I have a load of tabs in this book as well. I wasn't planning on annotating it, but as soon as I got into the book, I just knew that I had to. There are so many good quotes and moments in here that I just really want to refer back to easily, and that is why I have a load of tabs in there now. But yeah, I'm so glad I decided to pick this one up, especially after not enjoying the first two books of the month. I flew through this one, I did not want to put it down at all, and if you couldn't tell, I did end up giving this one five stars. The next book I read was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is the beautiful Fairy Loot exclusive edition with pink sprayed edges, which I do actually have an unboxing for, so I will leave it up above if you guys do want to check it out. But this is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in Shanghai in the 1920s. I don't really want to tell you guys too much about this book because I feel like it's one you should definitely dive into not really knowing anything. Even the fact that it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling kind of spoils the premise of this. But in this one there are two rival gangs called the White Flowers and the Scarlet Gang. This feud has actually been going on for years and it seems like the gangs will never truly be on the same side. However, one day when a contagion starts spreading throughout the streets of Shanghai and both of the gangs are being affected by it, the daughter of the Scarlet's gang leader, Juliet Kai, decides to team up with the son of the leader of the White Flowers, Roma Montagov. And it just says here, as the deaths stack up, Juliet and Roma must set their guns and grudges aside and work together, for if they can't stop this mayhem, then there will be no city left for either to rule. Perfect for fans of the City of Brass and Descendant of the Crane, this heart-stopping debut is an imaginative Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai, with rival gangs and a monster in the depths of the Huangpu River. I ended up really enjoying this book, I did give it four stars, the writing is absolutely beautiful, I would read it again just for the writing alone, but it is such a dark and eerie book as well, it has a lot of things going on, and the author doesn't hold back from letting you know the gory details either, which is something I do really appreciate. I feel like a lot of YA books especially are dumbed down, but I feel like if you know it's a gang-based book, then there's going to be some sort of violence and conflict in it, and I'm very glad that Chloe Gong did not shy away from that. I also love the two main characters, I love their dynamic, and I love the friendship group that both of them have as well. I feel like I was very invested in all of them, I cared about all of them, I did cry at the end of this book to be honest with you guys, which I don't tend to do very often, but it is just the fact that you're so invested in these characters, you want them to be okay, but again, when dealing with gangs, that's not always going to be the case. The only thing that put me off about this book though is the contagion in it. Because of the fact that we are currently in a pandemic, it probably wasn't the best time for me to pick this book up. It talks a lot about people having to stay at home and avoid other people because this contagion is spreading around, no one knows how it's getting from one place to the next, and the people that contract it are dying at a very alarming rate. So that hit very close to home for me, again it's my own fault, I knew what this book was going to be about diving into it, but all the same reading it and being able to actually picture what that is like just creeped me out a bit and I think that's what took it down to a four star for me instead of a five. So it was definitely nothing to do with the book itself, just personal opinion and the fact that I probably read it at the wrong point in my life. I'm so excited for the sequel though, I might even reread this before then because like I said I really did have a good time with this and I cannot wait to see where the next book goes. Next up I read a beast of a book and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the fifth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series if you count the novella A Court of Frost and Starlight which I tend to do, but this was actually released in February and so I couldn't not pick it up. I knew that everyone was going to be reading it and I knew that there were going to be spoilers everywhere so I just had to get in on that. This is one that I can't really tell you guys anything about because if you haven't read A Court of Wings and Ruin which is the third book in this series then this will definitely spoil you for that. So the only thing I'm going to say about this one is The Court of Thorns and Roses series continues in this sexy action-packed novel by number one New York Times best-selling author Sarah J Maas. That is all you need to know. It is very steamy, there is a lot of smut in this book so if you don't like that you probably won't enjoy this one. I had such a good time reading this though guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I do actually have a vlog of me reading this book, the first part of it is spoiler free and then I do have a little spoiler review at the end so I will leave that again linked up above and down below for you guys. So definitely check that out if you'd like to hear some more of my thoughts and you can also see the very emotional roller coaster that I had whilst reading this book. If you couldn't tell, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars, it's definitely one of my new favourite books. There were so many good elements in here that I just absolutely loved, we had such an amazing friendship, we have a character dealing with PTSD, and of course we have all the drama that goes along with the Sarah J Maas book. The next book I read in February 
gave was Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is a book I never thought I would pick up. When I think of Colleen Hoover, I automatically think of contemporary romance sort of novels, and that is definitely not for me. But I actually heard Chloe from Chloe Rees Books and India from What India Read talk about this book quite a lot. They both hyped it up, said it was a very fast read, and that it had the most amazing plot twist. And so one day I could feel myself starting to get into a reading slump, and I decided to take their recommendation and dive into Verity. And oh my goodness, guys, I'm so glad that I did because I had such an amazing time reading that book. It's an extremely dark and twisted novel, and this might sound strange, but I feel like that is what I do like in my contemporary books. If I do pick up a contemporary book or a literary fiction book, I like it to tackle the darker sides of reality rather than focusing on the fluffy romantic aspects of it. So this book was perfect for me. Again, this is another book where I feel like if I tried to explain the plot to you, I would probably spoil it. So I am just going to check on Goodreads and read you guys a synopsis. So it says, Loan Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Loan to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Loan arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Loan doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling admissions include Verity's recollection of what really happened the day her daughter died. Loan decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents would devastate the already grieving father, but as Loan's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognises all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue to love her. Like I said, this is extremely dark, so please make sure that you're comfortable with that diving into this book. There were a few times when I had to stop reading because I genuinely felt ill, but the way that the story all comes together, the way that things play out, just had me hooked and I could not put that book down. I did give that one four stars, it didn't quite hit the five star mark for me. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there is a plot twist at the end after a plot twist, and if that plot twist at the end had happened earlier on in the book and characters were aware of certain things before certain actions were taken, I would have preferred it a lot more. I felt like it would be so much more interesting and high stakes, but because it was kind of revealed after the fact, I just wasn't too bothered by it and I definitely feel like it brought the mood of the story down a bit and I definitely feel like it took the mood and the tone of the story down a bit. The last three books I'm going to talk to you guys about today are all the ones that I read for a 24 hour readathon that I did a few weeks ago. Again, I do have a vlog for that readathon so I will leave it linked up above for you guys. But the first book I did finish during that readathon was Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee. Not going to lie to you guys, I didn't actually end up reading this whole thing during that readathon. I have been sporadically listening to this since about November I want to say, but I finally decided that this was going to be the weekend that I finally finished it out and I'm happy to say that I did. Unfortunately though because I'd listened to it here and there over the course of a few months I didn't really enjoy it as much as I would have done having sat down and read this and paid proper attention to it. In this one we follow Saoirse and she is actually training to become the Queen's next royal spy. However one day when she and her friend Shango are out on a mission they are attacked by shamans and Shango is actually killed. Somehow though Saoirse actually manages to bring Shango back to life and she is unveiled as the first soul guide in living memory. Because of this she attracts the attention of the Spider King because the Deadwood that he's been ruling over for centuries is starting to get out of hand and is starting to grow restless. Only a soul guide can actually restrain these trees and so with Saoirse conveniently being unveiled as the first soul guide like I said, she's given the task to try and calm down this Deadwood. And it just says here, as war looms Saoirse must master her newly awakened abilities before the trees shatter the bristle piece or worse, claim Shango the friend she would die for. Like I said, I feel like I would have loved this book if I would have sat down and dedicated a good chunk of time to it but unfortunately Unfortunately, because I didn't do that, I ended up giving this book three stars. Definitely want to reread it before the second book comes out though. I feel like it's coming out later this year, so hopefully I can sit down and read this one and maybe my thoughts on it will change. And then we've finally made it to the last book of the month, and that one was The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince by Robin Hobb. So this is a little novella in the realm of the Elderling series by her. I am participating in Elderling Along, which is a read-along that's hosted by Becca from Becca and the Books here on YouTube as part of her book club catch-up book club. We started the first book in the realm of the Elderlings about a year ago now and we're only just moving on to the second phase and so before diving into the third trilogy in the realm of the Elderlings I decided it would be best to try and read the novellas. So on Goodreads it does say the realm of the Elderlings number 0.5 so I'm not sure if you should read this book before diving into the first trilogy which is the Farseer trilogy. I definitely say you can read it before or after it doesn't really make a difference as long as you read it before the third trilogy because we go back to that world and with those characters but for this one it does just say internationally best-selling critically acclaimed author Robin Hobb takes readers deep 
deep into the history behind the Farsia series in this exclusive new novella. One of the darkest legends in the realm of the Elderlings recounts the tale of a so-called piebald prince, a witted pretender to the throne unseated by the actions of brave nobles so that the Farsia line could continue untainted. Now the truth behind the story is revealed through the account of Felicity, a low-born companion of the Princess Caution at Buck Keep. With Felicity by her side, Caution grows into headstrong queen-in-waiting, but when Caution gives birth to a bastard son who shares the piebald markings of his father's horse, Felicity is the one who raises him. And as the prince comes to power, political intrigue sparks dangerous whispers about the wit that will change the kingdom forever. You definitely don't have to read this book if you don't want to, it is on script, that's how I listened to it, and it really didn't take that long to get through. I definitely think if you're invested in Robin Hobb's world, and in the Farsia trilogy especially, then you would really benefit from reading this book. It definitely gives you more of an insight into the wit, which is one of my critiques for the Farsia trilogy, is that I wish we would have seen more of how the wit worked and what the repercussions of using the wit were, so it was nice to delve deeper into that in this little book as well. I haven't actually rated this book on Goodreads because I do find it hard to rate novellas. All of Robin Hobb's books from me so far have gotten five stars. I absolutely love her books so so much, she is definitely a new favourite author of mine, but because this book is only a short one, I don't feel like it's fair to rate it in a way because I know so much work goes into her other books, and the reason I rate this book five stars is because of the detail that's in them. You simply don't get that in a novella. So I'm not actually going to rate this one, just know that I did really really enjoy it. I think it's definitely worth the read, I feel like there's going to be references toward this book going forward, and I'm just very excited to be reading some more Robin Hobb again. So these were all of the books that I managed to get to in February, as well as the two books I read on my Kindle. Please let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and your thoughts on them if you have. Whilst you're down there don't forget to click the like button if you like this video, as well as the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. I'm sorry if this video was very all over the place, like I said I haven't done a wrap up in so long I feel like I kind of need to find my groove again. I was stumbling over my words quite a bit and I'm not sure how this video is actually going to turn out. Hopefully it's good but please do let me know in the comments if you enjoy wrap ups or not because I don't want to be filming content for you guys if you don't like it. But obviously if you enjoy these videos I'm more than happy to keep filming them for you guys. I definitely want to get better at reviewing books as well so this will definitely help there. For now though thank you guys so so much for watching, it truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!